Hello, everybody, and welcome to another installment of Mego Museum's Mint Off Card. I am Brian, your host, and this week we're going to be talking about something very special, and that is the upcoming second wave of world's greatest superheroes, or should I say world's greatest super foes, that should be hitting stores in the next 60 days. Thanks to a generous donation from Mego Corp to this channel, I'm going to be giving a special look at some upcoming figures in the next couple of weeks. I thought it would start with what a lot of people would like to see, and that's the superheroes. So this wave is emulating the second year of the world's greatest superheroes, that would be 1974, when they followed up with two more lines, the world's greatest super gals, and our subject today, the world's greatest super foes. Now the super gals are coming, but Migo has stated that they are waiting for a new bandless female body before they do that. That makes sense. So in its place, we're getting bad guys in the form of Riddler, Penguin, Joker, and Reverse Flash. You may notice that someone kind of got cut from the team, and that is Mr. Mixus Pidlick. Uh, never really a popular figure back in the day. I can honestly tell you that my local toy store as a kid had boxed Mixelplex until 1983 when they closed their doors. So there's no love for Mr. Mixus Pidlick. The Reverse Flash is an interesting choice. Uh, it's obvious that the character's popularity now has really influenced this because as a kid, I don't think I'd heard of him. In fact, the only Flash villain... I'd ever heard of was Captain Boomerang as a kid. Migo never did a Flash, so it's hard to say what villain or if they would have even given him a bad guy to fight, but this is a colorful choice, and obviously Migo, of course, was able to reuse the Flash head sculpt, so that, that actually kind of makes sense when you think about it. it. It feels a little old school, like in the old Cornelius Galen swap. So let's see how the packaging, which is meant to emulate the 70s, world's greatest superhero window boxes, how it stacks up against the vintage. And there's some actually interesting quirks in the original vintage Super Foes that doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, let's break it down. One of the issues is that the original Mego Super Foes didn't follow the look of the original Mego superheroes. They had a completely different package design, and oftentimes they really strayed. So Mego obviously wants to keep going and make this all look like a line and they're cleaning some things up. So the Joker has the, you know, the world's greatest superhero logo at the bottom and it's it's slightly different than the original release. The top, we've got this uh, new logo, but that's actually not a new logo. It's from the middle 70s and the DC Comics Joker logo. Apparently, uh, according to Paul Clark at Mego, the Joker logo that was on the 70s box is something just done in-house by Mego, and nobody at DC had that. They said that's not official, so they used uh, a, a pretty good proxy, and I'm sure had the Joker been delayed a year, it may have shown up on his packaging back then. The back of the box follows, again, the early World's Greatest Superheroes look, uh, where the, you know, we've got the banner, the logo, and then the picture. There is, however, a little nod to the old collectible card that used to come with the packaging. Um, 74 is when they started doing that cut on the dotted line so you could actually cut out the character picture and keep it with you. Uh, a lot of kids did this. I bought a few of them over the years. So they're kind of keeping that aesthetic, and I really appreciate that. Even the Joker's foot is still cut off on the package, something that would drive me crazy as a designer, but they made it work. Now, the Penguin and Mr. Mixelplick had different boxes than the Riddler and the Joker in this original wave. Uh, there was more content at the bottom and less at the top, uh, leading to, you know, somewhat discordant look. Uh, I'm not really sure why that was done, but I'll bet you it has to do with their body style. Or hats? I don't know. They both had hats. The first thing you may pick up on is that the Penguin logo is different on the new version. It is more, I think, in line with the DC style guide. I really don't know if that's the Penguin's logo from the 70s. I, I don't remember seeing it in a Hostess ad or anywhere else. And it is kind of a weird one with the snow. So maybe that was an in-house Amigo move as well. I always liked it. 
But I kind of figure it, it probably was one of those issues with the licensor. Uh, the back, again, is a, is a pretty nice recreation of the original. Again, showing a little trading card. I, I really appreciate that they kept that going. Also, they cleaned up the art so the penguin isn't just, like, ghostly white like he's a relative of mine. And finally, I really don't know what to do to compare Reverse Flash. He's got a more modern logo, but I doubt he had one in the 70s. The look is more in line with how he's looked in the last 20 years in the comics. But it could also pass for a vintage Reverse Flash. Uh, the artwork they've used is of the more modern version. It'd be nice if they could have use some silver age artwork but then you know it may not gel with the figure's look um the orange color i gotta give them a little bit of credit for that's that's the perfect reverse flash because it's a mixing of yellow and red so enough with these darn boxes let's take these out of the box give a silly montage then i'll recap with uh, my thoughts and takeaway on these hang tight have it the world's greatest superheroes 50th anniversary joker penguin and reverse flash let me give you my thoughts figure by figure uh, the joker i mean i've always loved the simplicity and the charm of the original Mego joker and i'm happy to say that they've really captured the essence of that in the head sculpt it appears that they have redrawn the design of the outfit. He's got a, a wider tie, and his uh, vest is a little different from the original vintage, but I, I didn't notice that until I had them both together. The coat looks good. The sleeves are a touch short, although if you look at my vintage Joker, the sleeves are a touch long. But one of the nice saving graces of that is... Migo has gone and put the Joker on an all-white body. So you're not looking at, like, Caucasian flesh tone and having that ruin the effect for you. So I give them props on that. Having said that, it's really hard to nitpick this. You look at it, you know exactly what it's supposed to be, and it's a bang-up job. I was really curious how Migo would do the Penguin, and they did him on a chubby body, and it looks great. This is a bandless chubby body we will probably see more characters with a beer belly soon i hope i had the same thoughts on the suit but then i realized that it kind of just 
might be the same suit and it fits differently on this body. The belly is positioned differently. So it appears that the, the bow tie is a little stretched out, but when I look at it, I do not think that they changed the artwork on this. Uh, they got the expression right. It's a really full-faced penguin. His head appears to be just slightly larger than my vintage one. And that really works to fill out the character. I think the Penguin Heine had a small head thanks to the hat. And that's a real improvement, in my opinion. The cut of the jacket is slightly different from the original, but appears to be made of a very high quality. Again, I said this when I reviewed the superheroes last year. There's an essence that they've managed to capture, and it's not always in reproductions. You know, Some reproductions have just fallen short, and that's anyone who's attempted them. They, they lose the soul or the essence of the character, but they've managed so far to really capture the likeness and the energy of the originals, and that, that, is, that is admirable. So let's move on to Professor Zoom, a.k.a. Eobard Thon, a.k.a. Tom Cavanaugh, the Reverse Flash. Now, I didn't do a review of the Mego Flash because I got it very late and the cat was out of the bag, so I didn't, I didn't do that episode. But I was very impressed with it. I really liked the likeness. And while it doesn't fit into the 1974 look, I feel that it fit more into the looks of the later waves, like 75 and 76, where we're getting, you know, some really photorealistic sculpts like... Green Arrow and Mr. Fantastic. And the Flash could have easily been inserted into that. And I feel the same way about the Reverse Flash. It's amazing what a coat of paint does, because it really does alter the the Barry Allen head that we just saw. Um, the new paint job with the darkened eyes. This also falls into, you know, my mantra here on Mint Off Card, which is I prefer new things to straight up reproductions, even beautifully well done straight up reproductions for my own personal collection. So this guy really fits in nicely. Well, folks, that is my look at the upcoming Super Foes from Mego for the 50th anniversary World's Greatest Superhero Collection. Before you go, though, I wanted to make mention of a couple things going on. One, we've announced Mego Meet returning this summer at Columbus, Ohio. We will be part of PowerCon for this year. And there's information at the Mego Museum and at the Mego Museum Facebook page. And I'll put links down below. I hope as many of you can make it to this event as possible. There hasn't been a Mego community gathering in many a year. And it really feels like it's overdue. So please check it out and consider it if you're in the area. Also, if you like what I do on this channel, please consider checking out my magazine, Toy Ventures. Uh, issue 9 is coming up very shortly, and I'll be announcing that soon. And it is jam-packed with Mego goodness. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of these figures, uh, what you plan to get, what other villains would you like to see from Mego. Because honestly, I'd like to know who you'd like to see fight Wonder Woman or Captain Marvel or the Green Lantern. Uh, you can hit me up in the comments below here. You can hit me up at our Facebook group, Mego Mania, or at the forums at MegoMuseum.com. And thank you to all who joined over the holidays. We had a real rush of people, and it's nice to get some life back into the old girl. That's all for this week. If you're new to this, please consider hitting like and subscribe. If you're not new, please consider liking and sharing it. It really helps me out. I'll be back this week with a vintage toy video and some new Mego surprises. Until next time, buy what you like. Cheers.